Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this video, we will be reviewing the sum of the year's digits method for depreciation. Uh, for this example, uh, keep in mind we do have our blank sheets available on the website. I will link to that in the description below. So please feel free to pull up the spreadsheet and follow along just to make sure that you are gathering an adequate understanding. So here for the sum of the year's digits, we are going to be using a series of fractions that are going to tell us what amount of the uh, assets depreciable base is going to be expensed each year. And when we say depreciable base, it's essentially the item, uh, the amount of the item that is allowed to be uh, expensed. So for example, notice here we have this cost of 500000 If we say that it has a residual value of 50000 essentially the difference between those two numbers is the amount that we are allowed to depreciate over its useful life. So for example, let's fill in a little bit of a formula to get us comfortable with that depreciable base. So we're going to take the asset's cost and we will deduct out the residual value. Keep in mind we can't depreciate uh, past the residual value. And that is going to give us the depreciable base that we're looking for. So the cost of this truck is 500,000. Uh, residual value for the truck, 50,000. And so the amount that we can depreciate over its useful life is 450,000. And this is going to be the number, the number that we apply to our fraction for each of the years for the asset. So now that we have our depreciable base, let's figure out what our depreciation for each year will be. So here, this asset has a useful life of five years. So we expect to be, to be using this asset or depreciating this asset from 20x1 to 20x5. So when we take a look at these years, Essentially, we're going to be saying how many years do we expect to have remaining from the beginning of that first year. So in 20x1, at the beginning of the year, we expect to have five remaining years. 20x2, four remaining years. 20x3, three, two, and one, right? So essentially, if it's a five-year life, we are going to be starting by taking the sum of all of the years, which I know that that's a little bit interesting, but you'll see why we do that in a moment. So we see that we have five years, four years, three years, two years, one year. And so essentially when we're creating our fraction, five fifteenths, four fifteenths, three fifteenths, two fifteenths, and one fifteenth, we are essentially going to be taking the number of remaining years from the beginning of the year and dividing it by the sum of all of the years. And this is why they call it sum of the years digits, right? Um, the whole purpose of this is to basically be communicating that we expect that this truck is going to be generating the most revenues at the beginning. Or essentially, we want to depreciate the most at the beginning of its useful life rather than at the end. And uh, let's go ahead and do the math, and then you'll see what I mean once we get through all these different depreciation expense pieces. So for example, uh, year one, our fraction is 5 fifteenths. So we are going to take our 5 fifteenths and multiply it by that depreciable base. So 5 divided by 15 times 450,000. So in year one, we would depreciate a pretty significant portion of that cost of the asset. We're going to be getting rid of 150,000 of it. Uh, let's do year two. 4 divided by 15 times, again, your depreciable base. All right, notice that it's declining slightly, right? So we're doing more in year one than we did in year two. And we can expect this trend to continue. So here in our first year, we're depreciating the most, and in our last year, we're depreciating the least. And if we do go ahead and add all of these up, we see that the total amount that's depreciated over its life is equal to the depreciable base. Uh, but rather than just saying that, uh, let's try to fill in this uh, table real quick. That way we can kind of see it in action. So we have each of our five years, and we've already calculated our depreciation expense for each year. Right? So we're going to be copying these over to our table there. Right? Uh, let's figure out our accumulated depreciation for year one. 
Uh, since it's the first year, we just appreciated 150000 So at the end of the year, we have accumulated depreciation of 150000 uh, year two, our accumulated depreciation is 150000 which was the balance last year, and then the new amount that we added to it. So now we're up to, oh, that's way too many zeros. Now we're up to 270000 for our accumulated depreciation. And continuing on, year three, we started with 270000 and we added 90000 Year four, we started with 360,000. We added 60,000 more. And our last year, 420,000, and we added 30,000 more. So our last step is to figure out these book values for the end of each year. Keep in mind our book values are always going to be the cost of the asset. In this case, that truck was $500,000 minus our accumulated depreciation. So for year one, our accumulated depreciation was 150000 So we have cost of 500000 minus accumulated depreciation of 150000 So our book value is three fifty. Same idea all the way down. Cost minus accumulated depreciation. Cost minus accumulated depreciation. You can see the math going on there in that cell cost minus accumulated depreciation and last but not least cost minus accumulated depreciation and we see that at the end of the life of this asset the book value should be equal to residual value right so keep in mind some of the year's digits is um, what we would call usually uh, accelerated depreciation method we're going to be depreciating more at the beginning of its life rather than at the end this is usually done for assets where we expect that it is going to have most of its usefulness or revenue generating capability at the beginning of its life versus at the end okay um, if you have any questions about any other depreciation methods uh, straight line um, activity or units of output method, uh, double declining. I'm going to link to those additional videos uh, in the description below. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. And until next time, happy studying.